guys, this is Dave with Giz Audio. Today we're gonna to be checking out the brand new Moondrop Moon River 2 Ti, or Titanium. This is another release that I've been kind of anticipating because if you've been watching my USB DAC comparisons over the last year or so, you'll know that the original Moon River 2 was a favorite of mine and at one point was in my top three and it still is in my top five. So now we have the Moon River 2 2. And there are some upgrades, not just cosmetically, but on the inside as well, which we will go over. But first, let's go over what's included with the Moon River 2 TI. Of course, we have the TI itself. It also includes a short USB type C to type C cable, a USB type A to type C adapter, a product certificate, manual and warranty card. As for the price, specifications and design, the Moon River 2 TI comes in at $189. So they have kept the price the same externally, we have both a 3.5 single ended and a 4.4 balanced output, a type C input and a physical 100 level volume control. As far as its build, it definitely feels more robust and sturdy than the original, although it does have the glass window, which I imagine should hold up fine over time. And while I haven't had any issues with scratches up to this point, I am still trying to be careful. I haven't had it very long, but I have been using it quite a bit. And again, so far it's held up okay. But again, we'll have to see how it does over time. Speaking of the body, the design of the Moon River 2 Ti is very, very cool. And I know that the most important thing is the sound, obviously. But there's no denying the absolutely stunning design of the housing of the TI. It definitely appeals to my minimalist side. And aesthetically, this is probably one of the coolest USB DACs out there. I know Luxury and Precision makes great stuff too. But moving on to the inside. So we have some upgrades in terms of hardware, starting with the dual flagship CS43198, which is the same DAC chip used in the original Moon Over 2, but also in the FIO Q11, which only cost $90, just a side note there. It is also used in some higher end Estelle and Kern DAPs as well. However, we know it's not just about the chip it's about the implementation. But anyway, this is a good DAC chip. As for audio decoding, this is where we start to see some improvements, at least on paper. The original Moon River 2, while again using the same CS43198 DAC chip, maxed out its DSD decoding capabilities at 256. But the TI increases that and now it will decode up to DSD 512. PCM decoding is the same at 32 bits. Now the signal to noise ratio is also the same as the original, which is 131 dBs out of the 4.4 and 123 dBs out of the 3.5. So there is no detectable background noise at all with either of these. And I tested both of these with my Zen Pros and also my 2020 Andromedas. So the Moon Over 2 Ti is very quiet. It has no background noise at all. The voltage output is also the same at four volts out of the 4.4 and two volts out of the 3.5. In terms of power output, we may have a small amount of power output increase with the TI over the original. And I say may, because there isn't really any information on the power output of the original Moon River 2 available online, other than a general statement supposedly made by one of the engineers around the original Moon River 2's launch. And in that statement, and don't quote me on this, but apparently he had stated something along the lines of the Moon River 2 being capable of outputting up to 250 milliwatts at 32 ohms, which that seems about right to me. And I know there is also some conflicting information on the power output of the TI, because while most of the information suggests that the TI gives you 250 milliwatts, watts of power output out of the 4.4, I also found some additional specs that listed as 280 milliwatts. So again, that's why I said there may be an increase in power output, but just to be safe, let's assume it's the same. In my testing, I heard no difference at all as far as volume output. And I tested it with several different pairs of headphones that had different impedances and different sensitivities. As for the power output of the 3.5 on the TI, well, I couldn't find that either, but I know it's more than enough to power pretty much any IM. And I also had no issues really pushing my SV023, so that's that's pretty good. And then lastly, the Moon River 2 Ti is quite power efficient, and I did not experience any excessive power leaching from my phone. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the sound.
Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the sound of the Moon Over 2 Ti. As always, I feel I should preface this by reminding you that every device in your chain is important and will impact sound performance. However, ultimately, the level of your listening experience will be determined by the performance of your IEMs or headphones. So again, in my testing, I did not notice any difference in output when comparing the TI to the original Moon Over 2. That being said, with the TI, I had no issues getting my SV023s or my FT3s to acceptable volume levels, and it should power most full-size headphones just fine. As for the sound of the Moon River 2 Ti, in terms of its general presentation, it's quite linear and uncolored to me, but it doesn't come across as clinical or cold. There's still something about how it portrays instruments and vocals that keeps it from falling into that clinical territory, but it's not what I would consider to be warm either. It's it's very comfortable in between being clinical and musical, so it kind of gives you the benefits of both. Maintaining very good amounts of detail while also rendering instruments naturally. And those attributes are sustained throughout the entire frequency spectrum. So bass notes are linear and just generally sound correct. There's an ample amount of bass dynamics, mid bass texture, lower mid detail, but that linear presentation also carries throughout the entire mid-range as well. And again, it's given me plenty of mid-range detail and clarity, but as importantly, always rendering instruments naturally. Now, then as you move into the treble, the treble detail is excellent, but at the same time, there's something about the way the mids and the treble are presented and not necessarily a smooth presentation as much as it is a controlled presentation. And that was something that really stood out to me when I paired the Moon River 2 with the Letshore Condensa 12 because it's quite treble forward and highly detailed to the point of potentially even becoming a little f fatiguing depending on what you're listening to. Now my favorite pairing as far as dongle DACs go with my Cadenza 12 right now is still the Hibby FC6 and the Shandling UA5 because they have really good synergy and work quite well with the sound signature of the Cadenza 12. But when I paired the Cadenza 12 with the Moon River 2 Ti, I noticed a similar characteristic. Not that it necessarily sounds like the FC6 or Shanley UA5, because those do have a different general presentation, but the Moon River 2 Ti has what I can only describe as a, a smoothness, or again, maybe a better term again is control. Because I'm getting good levels of detail, but also really good levels of naturalness. And this characteristic was something that I also noticed with the original Moon River 2. As for the technicalities of the TI, it's very good. Detail levels are very good. It's very linear and transparent, but again, it will depend on the imaging, soundstage, and layering capabilities of your headphones or IMs. As for where I feel the Moon River 2 Ti lands in terms of value, I would say it's definitely a better value than the FC6, but maybe not as good of a value as the BTR7, depending on whether or not you need Bluetooth and the extra power output. That being said, at $189, I do think the TI is a good value, not necessarily in terms of features, but in terms of pure sound performance, because it's still what I would consider to be a higher performing USB DAC for the $189 price. So then the final question would be, where do I think the TI stands in terms of pure sound performance compared to my favorites like the FC6, BTR7, or even when compared to the original Moon River 2? And I'll answer that first. We'll compare these two first. And I do think there is a very slight sound improvement with the TI over the original in terms of detail retrieval. But if you already own the original Moon Over 2, I can't really justify recommending you spending the extra money on the TI because the sonic improvements are minimal. However, if you don't own the original and you are in the market for a new USB DAC that is sub $200, then I would definitely recommend the TI. Now, in terms of where I feel the TI lands when compared to my two favorites. When it comes to basic sonic performance, so it's transparency, it's detail levels, it's right up there with both the BTR7 and the FC6, but I would still give the edge to both of those over the TI, but not necessarily because they are technically superior, but because of their own unique 
attributes that appeal to me. The BTR7 giving more of a dynamic and engaging presentation probably due to the THX amplifiers and the FC6 giving a more natural or analog type of presentation probably due to it having the R2R architecture. But the bottom line is the Moon River 2Ti sounds very good and while the improvements over the original are marginal, they are noticeable. And as far as the design, I love the new design. It's simply stunning. And the overall build quality is also greatly improved. So overall, a solid offering by Moondrop. And again, it does get my recommendation. So that concludes my review of the Moondrop Moon River 2 Ti. If you're new to the channel and you like our videos, please take a minute and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to go a step further, you can also support us through our Patreon. I'll be sure and leave a link in the description. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this review. Please like this video. Please share this video. I hope you have an awesome day.